Let me check. You think we're good? I sure hope we're good. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Online Office Hours for World Regional Geography, a.k.a. World Regions and Geography of Wine. Here at Virginia Tech, home of the Fighting Hokies. Everybody's staying warm out there because it is getting cold. And it's particularly cold for me because I just got back from the Caribbean a few days ago. What the what? Is it doing snow in here? And why isn't it snowing more? Uh, before I go any further, uh, could I get a shout out uh, from anyone who's hanging out in the room right now uh, via the chat box, the chatter chatter chat box, uh, to let me know if you can both see me and hear me. And this is coming through loud and clear uh, before I talk for another five minutes before I realize it's not working at all. Mm. A hot toddy is where it's at. It's weather like this. First time chatter from Proxy, who can hear and see me. First time chatter from Jessica Coca. I know that name. We just added Coca on because of uh, uh, the textbook debacle. Good name, Coca. Love it. A first time chatter from KB Harath. O oh, three, all of which are giving a positive affirmation that this is coming through loud and clear. Uh, therefore, I will continue the rant. So I assume uh, uh, first time chatter from Bif uh, Bivash. I think it's Bivash, right? Because Bivash sent me an email earlier today that I'm going to answer their questions they sent me. And I got a heart from Pudi2345. Thank you. I heart you back, although I don't know how to do that. First time chatter from Brighton Y125 saying, hey oh, Professor, how are you doing, Brighton? I recognize that name, too, as someone who just got into the Moodle system today. Uh, and Vivash is saying, yes, they did send me an email. So uh, apologies right up front, but probably the apology goes to the people not in here today. <laughs> uh, because the people that are here today are enjoying this online uh, office hour that was thrown together fairly hastily. I was going to shoot for 8 o'clock tonight, which will be our standard operating time from henceforth that we will shoot for online office hours every Monday night at 8 o'clock. You want to stick with 8 o'clock? You want to go earlier, Katie? 8 o'clock is usually pretty good because everybody's already had dinner. What do you guys think about that? Is Monday at 8 o'clock a good time zone? We found in past semesters it's a good zone because not that many people have Monday night classes. And Monday's the beginning of the week, so you're not as busy yet and you don't have things due yet. So we, and it's before the week's work uh, uh, kicks in for our class. So it's, it behooves everyone. It seems to be a good time zone that we have used in semesters past and we'll use this semester as well as. As long as all you good people like it. First time chatter from Big Meme Lover <laughs> with the Velociraptor repeat from Proxy. First time chatter from JTPVT. Uh, welcome all first time chatters and new folks. Uh, so apologies for the hasty throw together of office hours early tonight. But it was several of you that we've been uh, going back and forth on emails with so many hundreds of you in classes today. Uh, and several of you reminded me of the Virginia Tech basketball game that's tonight. Men's basketball. How are we doing, by the way? I think we've got a pretty good team. Obviously, I don't really follow too much about sports or anything in life, really. Uh, but I, I, my instinct is we have a really good team, but we keep losing anyway. But I haven't paid attention since I was in the Caribbean for a couple weeks. So somebody give me a sense some uh, 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 avid hokey here in the chat room. Give me a sense of where our basketball team is this year. I, and I should back up, by the way, any random peeps who have stumbled into this, uh, uh, <laughs> this str live stream here on Twitch, uh, and they're thinking, who the hell is this guy? What the hell is he talking about, hokey? What the hell is a hokey? Uh, I am John Boyer. Uh, this is the online office hour for uh, classes here at Virginia Tech that I teach. And if you uh, don't 
uh, 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 go to Virginia Tech or are not in one of my classes, we'll welcome anyway. <laughs> we will, in this hour, answer any questions that people have about anything going on in these courses or whatever's going on on planet Earth, which is why I don't feel bad about asking about the basketball team. Uh, first time chatter from Pooty2345, who just hearted me, uh, says, started off strong and we slowed down. Yeah, that's been my sense as well. Sergeant Sachs up in this hizzle saying, hello, for the geography of wine, folks, what would you recommend for the first two wines to taste? Well, it sounds like we're getting right to it. Uh, Sergeant Sachs, I don't know if you have the Drink This Now book yet, which is unlikely unless you bought the Kindle version uh, off of Amazon. Everybody wants a paper version, and apparently they don't exist anymore, less than $100, which is preposterous. It's a $5 print book. But um, uh, if you look at Lesson 1, in the Drink This Now book, it will cite a several uh, different wines, which are good wines to taste for that very first lesson in the Drink This Now chapter. And I, I like to start people off in wine almost perhaps too radical. And so what you'll see in the very first exercise in chapter one, Drink This Now, is kind of what wine does when you pair it with food. And so it's a bit radical perhaps to start non-wine drinkers down this path, but I think you should do uh, lesson one, even if you don't write it up as a blog, uh, but look through chapter one and you'll see that it says, hey, try a little uh, charcuterie, uh, get a little, get a, go to Kroger, go to a grocery store, get some cut salami, some, some cut up cheese, you know, just... If they have one that's like a mix and match of several different meats and cheeses, don't spend a lot of money, just a little bit, just a little bit. And then go get something that's a, perhaps a bit bold and aggressive for first-time wine drinkers, and that would be something like a Chianti Classico or a red wine of the uh, of Piedmont or the Tuscan regions of Italy. Maybe even a big, bold Rhone Red. Now, these are wines that they're serious. They're reds, and they're serious reds and can be complex and again, perhaps challenging and perhaps overwhelming to a palate not used to red wines. But that's kind of the point of lesson one. The whole point is try this wine on its own and see what happens in your mouth and write things down. And then try it with a bite of cheese or a little bit of salami or a little bit of uh, uh, pastrami. And, tr and then drink the wine again and see what happens. That's really where a lot of the magic is that I hope inspires you for the course. So even though those might be higher test wines to start off with, if you're going to do those, which I actually recommend, then do them in this exercise with little bites of food so you can pay particular attention to how it chemically and taste-wise and aroma-wise changes in your mouth. That's the whole point of that lesson. It's the whole point of wine. Uh, now, if you've not drank any wine and you think, well, that seems like a bit much, Sure, you can start with any white wine. Really, any white wine will be much more easy introductory. If you uh, have never had a wine and perhaps you've dabbled with trying wines and you hate them, try something super easy like a Moscato de Asti. This is pretty much like uh, soda pop wine. It's delicious. It's easy. It's semi-sweet. It's semi-sparkling. No one hates Moscato de Asti. It's just easy. So... If your palate can't handle anything, start with a Moscato d'Asti. If you've dabbled a little bit and uh, you know a little uh, a bit about wines, maybe start with a Pinot Grigio or a Sauvignon Blanc. Those are white wines, and those are fairly accessible and easy with hints of uh, some flavors that you'll be able to detect. But if you want to take the full cup challenge, go ahead and do that lesson one and grab some perhaps intimidating red uh, and by the way, uh, a, a basic red Rhone wine is not terribly expensive. There, you can buy expensive ones, but you can buy very inexpensive ones as well. Same with uh, uh, Tuscan wines. They're a lot of them are expensive. You can find cheaper ones. So uh, I might even say uh, look for a oh, oh, this is a good one, a Nero de Avila. Nero de Avila is a grape uh, that is produced predominantly in Sicily. If you can find a good cheap Sicilian Nero de Avila, that's a great wine to try first time, and you won't pay a lot of money for it. Uh, I might have, uh, if you email me, I think Giannina's already made um, a list, right, Katie, uh, that she was redoing Chapter 1 and started making a list of, of suggested wines. So yeah, I, I have it. 
email email me and I will hook you up with a kind of updated list we have from that chapter and I'll even add in a few more things. Uh, let's see. Uh, and thank you, Sergeant Stacks, for liking the Kindle version. Most people want the paper copy. I don't blame them. I'm old. I like paper, too. Uh, Peroxy says, wine time. Uh, Brighton Y says, favorite dry wine at Kroger. I actually don't know Kroger wines very well because um, I only buy wines from Blacksburg Wine Lab because <laughs> I own it. <laughs> Me and Katie own it. So I don't go into Kroger too often. But I will tell you this, and it probably will be an expanded later lecture. It's hard to mess up at Kroger. All the wines that Kroger and grocery stores carry is almost by definition easy, accessible, not that expensive, and not that challenging. Now, we'll get to the not that challenging part later. But these are wines that are manufactured for specifically for American consumer taste. And so you, it's hard to get a wine in Kroger or a grocery store that's too challenging or too robust or too anything. They're made for the American palate, which is used to things not being robust or big or intense. So reds or whites, you probably can't go wrong first-timers looking, poking around in your local grocery store and getting something off the bottom shelf. <laughs> because they go, the lower the shelf is, the cheaper it is. But you go for the meat, whatever you can afford. Dabble with that. You shouldn't get into too much trouble buying grocery store wines. I would su I would heavily suggest against buying any wines that have a celebrity's face on them, or are owned by celebrities, or are <laughs> it just yeah, yeah. We're not moving around enough. The the automatic lights are going to go off. That's hilarious. Although it's better lighting on the screen. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it might go all the way off. <laughs> uh, okay. So, yeah, you, you won't go too wrong uh, in Kroger wine. They're all fairly accessible. Uh, and Sergeant Sachs says, would you actually recommend starting with a wine cheese pairing? Uh, uh, Sergeant Sachs actually would, based on the wine recommendations I just gave you. Uh, and again, email me, and I will pick out some very specific red wines that I'm a fan of because they're fairly uh, accessible even to a novice palate, and then see what happens when you try those with uh, food and wine, or uh, with food. Uh, first time chatter from Algonella. Is the textbook on Moodle or a separate website? Uh, Algo... Oh, what's that? Oh, Algonella. Uh, that, okay, so Plaid Katie already got that one answered. Uh, let's see. You guys have had a side conversation, I see. First time chatter from J Viper 4 Good name. Uh, for World Regions, will there be more lecture quizzes slash film quizzes, etc. after week eight. I noticed there are only book quizzes listed after week eight. Absolutely, J. Viper, four. Uh, you will have book uh, You will have book quizzes every uh, week this semester. You will have lecture uh, quizzes every week this semester all the way to the end. You will have international film assignments every week this semester all the way through to the end. I only uh, list up to week eight because... At that point, I uh, and actually we should probably go ahead and do it now. I send out a survey to classes every now and again, and this is one of the semesters I'm going to do it, where I send out a survey and I say, hey, here's all the regions of the world. Here's all the regions and maybe other couple global topics uh, from the book. What would you like to hear me lecture about for the rest of the semester starting in week eight? Uh, and we let, uh, because there's too many regions, they can't do lectures on all of them. I don't even know how I ever even attempted this back in the day to lecture about every region on planet Earth. It's way too much for one semester. And I'm way too long-winded. So when I used to teach this class live, I think I ever only got through like three topics. <laughs> uh, and so I will send out a survey. Uh, and Katie, if you could send me an email or any of you all send me an email to remind me, hey, Boyer, hey, Dorco, send out this world regional survey for us to pick the topics. And we can get that hot. And I will also put up a, um, a uh, I'm going to change the survey this year. So all of you will get to pick your one or two top favorite regions you'd like to hear about. And then I'm going to put a question on there, Katie, that says something like, and would you like to see one of these lectures live on Twitch over the course of several weeks? We've dabbled with that a couple years ago, and I had fun doing it right when we got on Twitch. And then I just got too busy and forgot to uh, keep doing it. So I did like... Uh, I did like an hour and a half or two hour lecture on Russia every week for like three or four weeks. And we still didn't even get through the whole Russian uh, uh, topic. But 
things of that nature. I'll let you all vote on and say. Another question will be like, and would you like this on uh, live on Twitch? If the answer is yes, I'm going to get my ass motivated this semester and mm, get some stuff cranked out for you guys. Okay, uh, thank you, Jay Viper 4. So, yes, it's not listed yet. You will have work every week all semester long, including even the last week of classes. I'll throw up some extra stuff. Uh, Sergeant Stack is saying, thanking me. Thank you, Sergeant. First time chatter from Kate Vitone. Good name, Vitone. Or is it Vite One? Uh, wait, did you say you own Blacksburg Wine Lab? I did indeed, Kate. Thank you for asking again. <laughs> uh, I can't really mention that too many times. In fact, I shouldn't have mentioned it at all, but I have to be honest when people say, what wine do you buy at Kroger? I don't buy wine at Kroger. I, I co-own a wine shop slash wine bar. And so, I, but I, for those of you that tuned into Office Hours last week, I can't uh, legally talk too much about this place or even host you all here, even though I would like to because it's a conflict of interest. So as your teacher at Virginia Tech, I can't tell you to come to my bar and spend money. And I don't really want you to. I mean, lots of you know about um, the wine lab already. And I did partly build it thinking, well, this would be a nice crucible that I could lecture at Virginia Tech about wine and then have students over here. We would try wines based on the lecture I just gave. That's been all my penultimate dream. Uh, but then I was informed, you can't do that. <laughs> you can't tell students. You can't make money by uh, on the side by telling students in your class to come do something at your bar and charge some money for it. I'm like, oh, no, I get it. I get it. That is a conflict of interest. Uh, however, we do set some stuff uh, things up here for our regular clientele, and um, you're welcome to come down anytime. And uh, if enough of you, like, petition me, outside of the classroom environment like this uh, we could try to put together some courses we are, we're going to put together some uh, and this is for the general public but you all are in the general public when you're not in my class we are going to try to put together some live lecture tasting lessons here this semester we're pushing really hard we're already behind obviously but uh, i think if any of you are on the listserv for wine lab you will see those things coming up soon so even that's perhaps treading across the line of conflict of interest, but you do not have to do anything in Blacksburg Wine Lab. You do not have to come to Blacksburg Wine Lab. You do not have to buy anything from Blacksburg Wine Lab to uh, be successful in this wine course. But ultimately, we'd like to do some stuff. I do want to do the uh, smell vision We have the space now. I want to do smell vision here. All right, we got to do smell of vision Yeah, we're doing smell of vision for the wine class. So you, there'll be something going on here, but that'll be free. So that's coming. That's coming, and perhaps right soon. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, Pooty2345 says, how does the Twitch current event quiz work? Well, we haven't done it yet. I haven't done a lecture on a current event. This is still more of a Q&A because we are just now on uh, day one of week two of the semester. So lots of folks, especially in world regions, haven't even gotten into the course yet because of the textbook debacle. Uh, and it's still early. So I want people to get their feet wet, uh, figuring out how to do the course, getting you know uh, some quizzes under their belts, video quizzes that are already there. Uh, for those that are on uh, our uh, Moodle platform already for world regions. You can already have already taken a couple of quizzes, hopefully the syllabus quiz, the intro to the class quizzes. And now you have several pop population lecture quizzes that are up and international film. Uh, so get your feet wet. Let's do that today. We'll just do another Q and a, but hitting the ground next Monday. Uh, maybe we even tease out the office hour and do an office hour world regions and an office hour for wine. Uh, because I will do a current event next Monday that I will turn into a pop quiz. And for those of you that tune in live, I usually give extra bonus points uh, for those that have actually tuned in live here while uh, we are going through whatever lecture material I'm talking about. So hang in there, uh, uh, Pootie. We haven't really done it yet. Um, give it one more week. So we'll do something next week. I mean, maybe I have time at the end of the week and I'll just be like, hey, I'm going to... I'm going to get on Twitch again and do something, and we'll, put a, we'll make a quiz out of it, but I can't promise that right now. It has been a significantly busy week, a very busy beginning part of the semester. 
And for those not in world regions already in wine class, you're good to go. You don't know anything about this, but 250 uh, folks in world regions are just now uh, uh, hitting me up on email or getting you through a back door to get into the Moodle system because the uh, textbook publisher's website has been down since Friday. For those of you that read, and so no one's been able to buy textbooks since like last Thursday. And so for those of you that read my funny email I sent earlier where I said, uh, LOL, yeah, you can't buy a textbook right now because uh, our the textbook company's website's been hacked by Russians and they're being uh, uh, held hostage by uh, ransomware. LOL, LOL. Wouldn't that be funny? You know what's funny? I was absolutely right. We actually got confirmation about two hours ago. They did get hacked by the Russians. They are being held ransom. The website is locked down. Uh, oh, Katie says you can't say it's Russians. I don't care. Sue me, Vladimir Putin. I say it's Russians. Okay, maybe it's the Chinese hackers. Uh, you know, I shouldn't pick on the Russians and Chinese, but I will because they have the biggest hacking communities online and they love hacking American companies. So it's a logical leap. It's not uh, stereotyping or racism. It is what it is. They are quite good at it, and they have the biggest hacking organizations on planet Earth. Having said that, for all I know, it's a Ugandan hacking company, a, a hacking group that got in, but the odds are with the Russians uh, and or the Chinese after that. So talk about current events. Talk about learning about the real world. For anyone who has only heard about ransomware and read stories about companies or individuals that have gotten hacked and shut down and locked out of their own computers or their own systems uh, until they pay uh, uh, some money, and you're like, huh, that's weird. I don't know anybody that that's ever happened to. Now you do. You're one generation. You're one step removed from a company that we know got hacked and are being held ransom right now. Oh, my God. Sorry. I guess I shouldn't be so... Uh, mirthful about that but it is kind of funny uh it's kind of funny because that's a major multi-billion not billion they're a multi-million dollar company why didn't you have something in place for this guys what century are you living in you have to be prepared for that and on the first week of classes russia why couldn't you have hacked this company next week when everybody already had their textbook i think putin's targeting world regions class specifically as i think what's going on here Suckers, we did a workaround. Try put that in your pipe and smoke it, Putin. If I keep saying that and I ended up assassinated, you guys will know what's going on, all right? <laughs> okay, um, let's see, where do I leave off at? Uh, first time chatter from Falvo. Good name. Uh, will there be exams in Geog 1014? Nope. Uh, also, is Moodle available currently for students to sign up? Uh, so, Falvo, you must not have read the email I sent out um, earlier today, the class email I sent out through Canvas at about 11 o'clock today, 10 or 11 o'clock. And maybe you just added the class because people are jumping into the class right now. Uh, strangely enough, people are dropping out of the wine class and people are adding into the World Regions class. It's usually the reverse. So, um, it's, uh, a Falvo... Go back and read that email. In fact, it would be the email on Canvas before the one you got about this online office hour. And read through that and then send me and Katie an email if you have not gotten your book uh, and you're not on Moodle yet. Uh, J Viper 4 says, thank you. No, thank you, Viper. Uh, Al Ganella says, how do I access the temporary textbook? Did you already answer that one, Katie? Yeah, yeah, Al Ganella, the same answer I just said to uh, Falvo applies to you. Go back and read the email from earlier today. And if you do not have a textbook and you're not on Moodle yet, text, I'm sorry. Well, I'll give you my phone number. But uh, email Katie and I, and we will get you hooked up as soon as we finish up uh, with office hours here. First time chatter from Bells2352. Says, I got the books online and it doesn't have page numbers. I have just been putting in the section number in my blog. Is that okay? From wine class, not from Moodle. Is it wine class? Yeah, what, what book are you referring to, Bells? It doesn't have page numbers. The navigation has pages. Huh. Section numbers, but not everything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the answer is yes. 
Uh, just putting in the section number or subheading title or whatever is fine, but actually we're curious which book is it you're looking at that does not have page numbers. Uh, Pooty is giving me a shout out. Thank you. Thank you, Pooty. Uh, Proxy wants that big current event next week, all caps. That means it's important. Uh, let's see. Redeemed highlight my message. I'm not sure what that means. Redeemed highlight my message at 100. You should see this message, Kate. I don't understand what that means. Yeah, it's just that they, they redeemed their... They made it. Oh, they redeemed something. Cool. Thanks, Proxy. <laughs> First time chatter from A. Carnahan. Carnahan. Uh, have you heard of winemaker Clark Smith from California? He wrote Postmodern Winemaking, Rethinking the Modern Science of an Ancient Craft. I have not... Uh, 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 a Carnahan, could you please email me that title? Thank you. I'd like to check that book out. That I'll sounds quite good. Be the next Carnahan. Uh, because he's my great uncle. <laughs> well, now I'm even more intrigued. Yes, yeah, send me a link uh, to Amazon. I'll buy it immediately so your uncle can get some royalties. <laughs> uh, thank you, Falvo. Right back. Bells2352 says, I got them on Kindle. So they have a location, but they are, aren't universal. It depends on how big your text is. But which, but which book, Bells? Uh, we have three books for the class. Same thing for the blog. Zareli, we have the Kevin Zareli text. To the blog, it's my Folly. We have to the book. Okay. Okay. I just I have to look at Wine Folly then. Uh, I didn't realize they were doing that. It's such a good book to buy paper copies of, by the way. Hmm. What year to come out? This is a Carnahan's uncle. 2013. 2013. It's pretty new. Yeah, I'll check that out. Put that in my library. I have a pretty extensive wine and beer and uh, alcohol library. Uh, let's see. I've uh, Ivan Latanki. Latanki. I've Ivan Latanki says, "What's up, boy, your dude? How are you doing? I am great, Ivan. How are you with the double Velociraptors?" Uh, and Bell says 2352. All of the books on Kindle do not have page numbers. Huh. Yeah, I guess, uh, Bells, we'll have to look into that. But, yeah, just reference what, which particular book you're referencing in the section that you're referencing. It's fine for your blog. Uh, any student as good as you that's already thinking that far ahead and referencing stuff in your blog, we know you're, you're solid. <laughs> just do the best job you can. You're going to do well. Okay. I do have to go back to uh, Bivash. Right? Am I saying that right? Bivash, am I, uh, am I saying your name correctly? Uh, Bivash, actually, in the slurry of emails I've been answering all day, and we have, I think I've gone through 300 emails today. It's been a, this might be our personal record. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, close. So, it's Biv so Bivash? Bivash? I think it's Bivash, I hope. Uh, Bavash sent an email earlier uh, saying, since we are already emailing, I have a random question. Forgive me if I am remembering incorrectly, but I remember Papua New Guinea and Iceland, and actually I think you changed it to Greenland, are not being included in any of your world regions. Why is that? Also, how different are your world regions defined compared to other people's? How controversial is your choice to leave out Turkey uh, out of the North Amer North African slash Middle East region? I feel like some people would even include it in Eastern Europe. Very great questions, Bavash. Bavash. <laughs> <laughs> and Bavash, uh, specifically calling out Turkey, are you of Turkish? descent perhaps <laughs> do you have ties to turkey inquiring minds want to know uh, uh but Bavash, he, uh, i love your line of questioning and uh <laughs> Bavash, no <laughs> um i love your line of questioning and perhaps you have already uh in fact i think you probably have unless you just added the course today or got on moodle today you should have already watched a, a lecture series called what is a region? That should have been in kind of the intro lectures, I believe. In fact, I'm positive it is. And so that, that lecture section sums it up pretty succinctly and, and, and really outlines that, yes, these are my world regions, or these are regions of the world as defined by me, John Boyer, a professor at Virginia Tech. 
uh, everyone can define any regions of the world they see fit. They can define sub-regions of the world as they see fit. They can define regions of Virginia as they see fit. You could define regions based on physiography, on river systems, on religious systems, on economic systems, on wind systems, on soil systems, on... Uh, you, you fill in the blank. It, uh, regions are based primarily on what the user, in this case me, users. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a big Tron fan. Users. Um, regions are defined by whatever particular user is looking at and chooses to, uh, I, I, as a factor, a homogeneous factor chooses to outline what it is they want to pick as the region. That's up to the user. Now, I'm looking at the whole globe, and I've got a quarter century of experience teaching this class and traveling around the globe, uh, more than a quarter century traveling. Uh, and this is the way that I understand the world best and the way that I can teach the world best to folks that don't know that much about probably 95% of the regions that are uh, in the textbook. And so we can't include every fact. We can't include every detail. You can't look at every single country or every single sub-state of a country individually. That would be an encyclopedia set, not a textbook. Uh, and it's too much for even a class. So I am a, a proud generalist. I'm looking at big systems. And I do have to choose which factors I'm going to use to say, you know, this group of countries over here or this uh, area of planet Earth over here, they've got a whole lot of things in common that I'm going to put them together and I can generalize some major attributes to help teach you something about Central Asia that you probably didn't know anything about. Uh, and again, it's very general. There are always exceptions. Everything I say is anytime you're looking at a bigger and bigger and bigger part of planet Earth with more and more and more people in it, you're generalizing. There will always be exceptions to the general characteristics you're talking about. And the bigger and bigger area with the more and more people that you're looking at, the more exceptions there'll be. But I stand by my regions because I'm like, eh, again, in general, this works for this group of countries I can tell you about. They're, I can define the religious systems of South Asia, let's say, uh, without having to throw out too much or include too much. Just based on religion and ethnicity, I can be like, I can tell you about South Asia. Uh, and when you go outside of that region, it gets kind of different. Uh, simply uh, looking between the difference between the Himalayan system. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. Um, I'll do my best. Yeah, you can tell them to come on in. <laughs> I got a side conversation. It's got to go on too. So the um, the... The user chooses the region, and if you look just to say the Himalayan system that separates uh, China from India, you can get a quick sense of, well, they're right next door neighbors, uh, and they're both Asian countries, so couldn't you just say, it's Asia? It's like, yeah, but India and China, uh, they're both in a continent we call Asia, but that's where the similarities stop, so you can't really put those two together at all, and there are reasons why you surely shouldn't put them the histories are different, the ethnicities are different, the languages are different, the physio physiological, physiographic systems are different. So it's like, no, I choosing to say, hey, here's where I'm going to pick, here's where I'm going to uh, draw lines and say, these things I can explain together. Once I go outside of here, it gets tougher. So to your point on your sub uh, questions on that, Bivash, is I didn't really include Greenland anywhere. It would probably be included in what I now call Anglo-America, the very first chapter of regions. It's probably in Anglo-America, but there's not that many people there. It actually straddles worlds. It's a, a mostly an Inuit population that's there, but it's a Danish colony. So it's in this weird netherworld, and there's simply not enough humans there, and it's not a, of enough significant cultural, political, or or anything else impact to say, hey, this is so important, I need to teach you about it. It's like, it's, a Greenland becomes almost a distraction to talk about it because it's like, I, doesn't really fit in anywhere, uh, and it's not big enough to warrant a whole nother chapter. Uh, the same with Papua New Guinea. We, can, we typically just go ahead and chuck in Papua New Guinea with uh, Southeast Asia. But I'm hesitant to do that because it doesn't, 
Papua New Guinea is very distinct, and it really has hardly anything in common with uh, Southeast Asia, even though it's there. Uh, Papua New Guinea is part of a, a, a region much better defined by calling it the Pacific realm, the island, the Pacific island realm of what's going on here. Uh, Papua New Guinea is much more in common with, say, uh, uh, Melanesia and Polynesia and even Hawaii and Easter Island and maybe even New Zealand, in a sense, than it does with anything in Southeast Asia. So it's marked out intentionally because the generalizations that I, in the book or in a lecture that I give you about Southeast Asia, they just don't apply to Papua New Guinea. It's, it's so much of an outlier. I can't put it in Southeast Asia. It doesn't make any sense, even though physically it's right there. In no other way do the generalizations I make about Southeast Asia apply to Papua New Guinea. So I, I intentionally be like, no. I, I would hopefully someday, and if anybody wants extra credit, you can do this. <laughs> uh, I someday should write another chapter called the Pacific, the Pacific Realm. And I've actually dabbled many times with uh, writing whole chapters on each ocean. So we don't really talk about the Atlantic Ocean or the North Atlantic versus the South Atlantic and the North Pacific versus the South Pacific or the Indian Ocean. But I increasingly, the older I get, I, I'm more and more intrigued with the idea of like, I should probably write a chapter about each of the oceans because they're their own little ecosystems of interaction and trade and travel and, uh, and uh, 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 political borders and political fighting, which is coming up soon in some of the world uh, oceans. And so resource allocation, all these things are, that happen, say, just in the North Atlantic are so distinct that they don't really, oceans are different than the land, so they don't really apply. Uh, and I don't like to put them in the regions that I, I have defined because they are different. They're ocean. There's no humans there. But they're increasingly important enough in today's world. I'm like, maybe I should include them. What do you all think about that, by the way? So if anybody wants some extra fun credit, uh, you can help me flush out a outline for what would we do a lecture on the Atlantic? What, what I think we should do a lecture on the Arctic Sea. I mean, there's a lot going on up there, and it just doesn't fall easily into any other category on planet Earth. It's kind of its own realm, but we often ignore it in college and in re geography classes because there's no humans there. Uh, but they are becoming of increasing importance on planet Earth, and I kind of think I want to cover them. So does that answer your questions, Vivash, of why those particular entities are not included in a region and how I define regions uh, overall? You'll, again, go back and watch the What is a Region lecture, and you'll, be, you'll, you'll see I talk about this in even more detail than I'm ranting right now. Uh, the other one you had is, why isn't Turkey in the Middle East? That actually is the most contentious one, and I catch flack from uh, uh, lots of folks, even academics who are like, no one does that. Why do you do that? And I'm like, well, I do. <laughs> because I look at Turkey and I say, yes, it has a lot of similarities to the surrounding countries. And historically, I mean, categorically, historically, it was counted as part of the Middle East. But it was only historically, categorically counted as part of the Middle East because they're Muslim. And so everyone for a very long time is like, well, uh, you know, Turkey's an Islamic country, so it's in with all the other Islamic countries, so that's just one region. But I look at it and I say, that's not strong enough. Yes, Turkey is an Islamic country. So is Pakistan, though. And I'm not going to include Pakistan in the Middle East. Actually, some do. I don't. I think that's too far. There's too many differences. Uh, Kazakhstan is Islamic. You want to include that in the Middle East? <laughs> We don't include, many don't include those countries as part of the classic Middle East because they're geographically, physically far, further away. Uh, Indonesia is an Islamic country. Is that the Middle East? No, I think so. It's too far away. So even though Turkey is close, we're only putting it in the Middle East because of its proximity and solely because it's Islamic. And I don't think that's strong enough because Turkey is different enough from uh, most of the classic Middle East. What you'll learn, hopefully, if you don't know this already, you'll learn in this class, is that Turkey is comprised of, surprise, surprise, ethnically Turkish people. Uh, and the Middle East, surprise, surprise, is predominated by ethnically Arab people. Uh, the Turks and the Arabs speak different languages. They have different histories. They have different outlooks on planet Earth. They have different art. They have different music. They have different everything. 
Uh, by the way, Turkey is a democracy. The rest of the countries of the Middle East are not. So, for at least for a little while longer. <laughs> so, uh, to me, when I start to kind of rack up how I, to explain things, putting Turkey as part of the Middle East simply because there's Islamic people there is not a strong enough argument, and it glosses over way too many things that make it inappropriate to just say it's Middle East. By the way, I'm increasingly thinking that about the country of Iran. Uh, I have to really talk about Iran as a, a separate entity because, again, it's Islamic, and that's about where the similarities end. And hopefully what you'll also learn in this class is that most of the Arab countries in the Middle East really hate Iran and vice versa and have historical animosity, and they're different ethnicities, they speak different languages. Now we're back to the same things I was talking about Turkey. So it's easy to keep fracturing down when you're building regions and taking smaller and smaller and smaller parts. And if you do that too much, then you've just made a mess of it because you have 5,000 regions on planet Earth and it becomes a wash. It's too much noise. So it's a delicate balancing act. And what I just talked about in the Middle East is kind of the most challenging one. It's like, should you just lump it all together and get it over with? Or should you break some things down and compartmentalize a little bit more? And again, over 25 years of teaching, uh, getting feedback from students and, know, and understanding what the average American student knows, the I have intentionally, uh, it's a well thought out intentional structure that I've built my region saying, hey, here's the best way I can teach you about this. Yes, I could just have a chapter that says, Middle East, everybody's in it it makes more sense to help you understand the area to be like, let's talk about Turkey. Let's talk about the classic Middle East. Then let's talk about Turkey. Then let's talk about Iran. They're kind of different. <laughs> and that's why I do all that stuff, Bivash. I hope that answers your question. First time chatter from Avsis. Uh, Avsi says, uh, hi, my friend is going through a really hard time and, and loves to watch you. Could you please give some motivational advice? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I'm not sure what uh, motivational advice I can give on the spot, uh, Avsis, but hang in there, Avsis's friend. You've got this. There's more good in the world than evil. You just hear more about the evil. Uh, stop paying attention to the noise. Focus on doing creative, fun things and being around interesting people and having a better time just enjoying life, period. By the way, that's one of the reasons why we have this whole thing called university. I know a lot of you think the university is here to get you a good job. It is not. You come to the university uh, to experiment, to perhaps uh, try five, six, ten, twenty different things and fail at most of them, to Take topics in classes you know nothing about and perhaps find interest in one or two or all of them and perhaps find a way in the world or at least build a set of tools that you're good at this. I learned some Russian. I learned some biology. I learned this. And lo and behold, I'm going to get a research project and go study something biological in Russia. I, I'm just making this up, but that's why we come to the university. Don't get too bogged down trying to get straight A's because you think you're here to get straight A's so you can get a good job. You're not here to get a good job. That'd be it. If that's what you want out of life, I want you to get a good job. But you're only going to get that good job if you cultivate some life skills here, cultivate some knowledge, cultivate some networks, build a friend base that you will take with you the rest of your life, meet people you never would have met, learn things about other parts of the world and skills that you never thought of even having. That's what the university's power is. So do that as this is friend. And don't worry so much about the weight of the world that's bringing everybody down. Your generation, maybe this will be uh, uh, motivational for you. Uh, take it from an old man. Your generation, a lot of people make fun of this generation going, oh, they're a bunch of whiners and, oh, they don't work as hard. Or, oh, this, that, and the other. Man, people have said that forever in human existence. All oh, the younger people, they all suck. Uh, I actually uh, understand, perhaps more than others or more than most, that your generation is a heavy generation, uh, meaning there's a lot on your shoulders. There's a lot on your minds. Uh, you're the first generation that has been inundated with 24-hour news cycles, and you have your phones all the time, and you get updates all the time, and there's pressure for your social network all the time. Uh, you're the first humans that have ever gone through that. So it's no wonder to me 
uh, that folks in your cohort are stressed out all the time and and think the world's ending all the time. Um, and I, I don't know if that's motivational, but I'm here to tell you, I recognize that. And you should recognize that. Uh, you're a great generation. Take it a little easier on yourself. Don't, don't take things quite so seriously. Try to tune out the noise as much as possible and see if your life improves. I'm guessing it will. I challenge everybody who's your age to literally turn off your phone for just a week. Just a week. Just a week. Just a week. It's just seven days. Just a week. Uh, and see if it doesn't improve your mood. <laughs> just go to classes and read and do stuff. Try to stay off the internet, by the way. So turn off your phone and only go on the internet to read and watch movies and do creative stuff. Try that. See if it doesn't work out. I don't know if that's any good advice for your friend, Absis, but that's the best I got right now. And thank you so much. Oh, and I'm sorry. Uh, his name was Vale. Hopefully that helps Vale. And if not, come back next week. I'll have a motivational minute at the beginning or the end of the podcast just because of you, Vale. Uh, Bifashali says, I meant uh, other experts would define when trying to learn about the entire world. Uh, yes, Biv uh, 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 Bivash, did my answer answer that for you? Uh, other experts uh, would define the entire world differently than me. And specifically, the more smart you are, the more knowledge you have about any part of the world, the more you would break that, part, that region apart more. So many generalists like me and people that teach say, in geography in high school or middle school or even at college, they just they have these books and 99% of world regional textbooks just say, oh no, Middle East, that's, that's all. Middle East, North Africa, Turkey, Iran, it's all Middle East. It's all Middle East, it's just Middle East. If you talk to a generalist, are fine with that. If you talk to a specialist in the, uh, in the Middle Eastern region, a historian uh, or an ethnographer or anything else, anyone who's a specialist in the Middle East will tell you, oh God, no, there's 20 regions, there's 20 sub regions of the Middle East that are so different you should tease them out. So the more you know about a place, the more you understand its nuances and its differences and you have a tendency to pull them apart generalist step back and be like, oh, well, we could clump things together. I'm somewhere in between. I, I, uh, I am a generalist, but I think the important nuances need to be pulled out, whether experts agree with me or not. We all approach things differently. Uh, I can't repeat what Absis says there about school, but <laughs> it's school is good. <laughs> First time chatter from Sergeant Gummy Bear. <laughs> Spelled B-A-R-E. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, I'm planning to take the Geography of East Asia over the summer, and I was wondering if you could give a description of what the class is about. Yeah, it's pretty much world regions, but it only focuses on that one region. Uh, and quite frankly, it will be a lot of a repeat material that you probably will see in this class with some added films and perhaps some added lectures about Korea. Uh, so... Yeah, I, I'm blowing off my own course, but it's a subset of the World Regions class that focuses just on that region and covers a lot of the stuff that you probably already will see if you've taken World Regions. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, a. Carnahan says, what, if anything, do you know about the winemaking process of reverse osmosis? Ooh, uh, I know about this much about reverse osmosis, and I think, and obviously you know something about it, um, um, Carnahan, I think think the major use of reverse osmosis in wine is to denature it, uh, which is to remove the alcohol. Uh, but I could be wrong. I don't know any other, I'm trying to think of any other winemaking steps that would require reverse osmosis besides denaturing. So if you know something I don't, by all means, chime in. Uh, first time chatter from Aubrey YG264. Uh, I know a bit late to the office hour session, but I was wondering if you could go over a bit more how you can pick and choose what assignments to do for the wine class. Yeah, sure. Uh, if you've taken the World Regions class, the courses are structured uh, exactly the same in terms of how you earn points and earn your overall final grade. There are more point assign assignments worth points offered than you need to get an A. So you do not have to do every single thing. You possibly, in fact, I shouldn't even say that. I'm not even gonna say it out loud. Okay, I'll, get, I'll say it out loud because there's only a few of you here. You possibly 
can squeak by a strong B, certainly a strong C, and maybe a B in this course uh, if you just did all the quizzes. But you'd have to do well on all the quizzes. All of them. All of them. You can't skip any of them, including the films. So you, if you didn't want to blog at all, you could get a strong B. If you do very well on all the other assignments, that's why I heartily encourage blogging. If you get into the blogging and you get into the tasting, I know some people don't want to drink, all right? Uh, the If you get into the blog assignments, which I heartily encourage, the, you will have so many more point opportunities that you, if you are an adamant blogger and you blog every week, you could just do at least the couple of wines you could do every week and then try to do at least one of the wine and cheese assignments, try to do one of the wine food dinner pairing assignments. There are three offered through the semester, uh, three deadlines that you could submit one. Go through and look at the blogging stuff and really get a group of friends. Find a cohort uh, of, of, of good peeps and do potlucks together. Uh, mix and match. Have surprise wine uh, or, or mystery wine parties where everybody brings a bottle and a brown paper bag. Uh, and you taste stuff, and maybe everybody brings a cheese or two. It, this course, much like life in general, and certainly wine consumption, it works best with company. So I'm not forcing anybody to go make friends. Hopefully you already have some. <laughs> but I think the Discord for this class has been set up for the wine class, so perhaps if you don't have a lot of friends or don't know anybody else who's uh, into wine or taking this course, maybe jump on the Discord and try to make some friends and see if there's uh, anybody you want to get together with or who might want to say, hey, I'd get together with other folks uh, to share the love, share the joy, share the burden of buying wine and bringing wine uh, and bringing food to get together. So my whole point of this rant is if you blog and you're a decent student and kind of do even half the blogging and then you do the quizzing and stuff that's your lockdown a you're you'll lock down an a a month before the class is over let me say that again you'll lock down an a a month before the class is over the people that get into the wine course and really get into it and blog everything they can from day one and do all the quizzes they can from day one they're done by april i mean early april early you can work completely ahead in this course uh and you should because most of you are probably graduating seniors and you're going to have a lot of things to do as the semester gets closer and closer to the end. And don't have this course as one of those things you have to do in, you know, May 1st. Uh, there will be those slackers that wait till the bitter end, but you shouldn't. Go ahead and learn a whole bunch. Have a good time. Make some good connections. Try some good wines and get this over with uh, by April Fool's Day. It's been done. It's been done by April 1. Oh, that's a bumper sticker right there. Uh, so... That's what I mean by that, uh, uh, Aubrey. So I don't know if that helps. Uh, your second follow-up comment is, I know in the syllabus it says you can kind of cultivate your grade. I just didn't know specifically how you can go about this process. Hopefully, does that help? Yes, Aubrey uh, G does say it helps. Thanks for the clarification. Oh, thank you. Uh, Vivash says, yes, that means I must have answered a question correctly uh, for them. And A. Carnahan says, the question on reverse osmosis was just about curiosity. I'm sure you would learn more about it if you check out the Postmodern Wine Making Book. I'm on that book, my friend. I'm on it. Uh, and how does grading work for blogging? Do TAs go through the blogs or do you get a chance to read them? Uh, I will not tell a lie. The blogging grading is thorough. Uh, so we do have a team of four TAs. Uh, and Katie and I also sporadically go in and check to make sure the TAs are grading properly. So there is an intense grading process and there are checkups on that intense grading process. Yes, Katie. I was going to say, um, it helps them when they're going to blog on the Wine Journal because they use the type of blog. Versus okay, the and Katie, Katie just said they built, I guess, last year, a couple years ago, on Moodle, there's a blog grading check sheet for you, not for the TAs, uh, but it's for you. You should download that, print it out, print out a bunch of copies, uh, and every time you're doing a blog, you can literally just be like, did I do this? It's on the list. Did I do this? Okay. Did I do that? Yep. Okay. And if you do those things, you're not really going to get dinged for grammar. Uh, we're not really going to spell check you. Uh, it is more about the content and about you just doing the work. Uh, we also do randomized checking pretty much every other week for blog duplicates. And I drop the hammer hard on people 
who are cutting and pasting other people's blogs or people that are sharing outright identical blogs, the hammer will be dropped on you when you are caught. <laughs> so just don't do that. We heartily encourage you to work together, to sip together, to taste together, to talk about wine together, to bring food and wine together, to even express, well, I'm getting hints of violence in this. Oh, wow, so am I. Do all of that together. You write up your blog on your own. That's just how it works. And it's not hard. I think you all know it's not hard. to find. There's cheating software out there. Just be like, run this algorithm do you see this duplicated anywhere else? And it's easy to pop you, so don't go down that road. You don't need to. I want you to learn. That's why we have to post pictures of yourself. And that's why we also say you have to post pictures of yourself doing this. And people have tried to cheat at that in the past. And people have stolen other people's blogs before. You're like, dude, what is wrong with you? This is university, for God's sakes. You're stealing someone else's picture saying it's you? Oh, uh, anyway, on an up note... <laughs> Uh, first time chatter from Karab19 saying, I know this is probably in the syllabus, but I can't remember. Where can we check our point total uh, for whichever class you're in? Okay, but I'll say it out loud. Whatever class you're in, uh, the point total and Moodle under grades. When you navigate down in the left side, you'll see, if you just go all the way to the bottom of the page of your grades, right? It's, it's a column in the bottom. It tallies up every single time you do anything. Uh, it tallies it right up, well, except for wine class where you have to wait for your blogs to be graded. But when they're graded, your points go straight in, and it should show up in the in your column as well. So you can go to your columns and be like, wait a minute, I turned in this blog. How come I didn't get any points here? Hit us up. Hit up the TAs, and we'll figure it out. Okay. Uh, Aubrey says, have the TAs been updated in the syllabus? I didn't see their info for a wine class. Uh, no, we were actually waiting to hear back from one of our TAs who was actually out of the country. <laughs> we were waiting for them to see to see if they were coming back into the country and if they're actually working for us. And that has been confirmed earlier today. So, Katie, we need to get up the TAs online today. That will happen today. Thank you for the reminder. And let's see. Hey, Carnahan says, okay, thanks. I'll have to check out Moodle. And great. Thank you. Okay. I think I've answered all questions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so does anybody have any other questions before we wrap up the old online office hour? And again, to stress next week, not stress, to outline, um, for anyone who just added the class or just got the textbook, uh, everything is going to be extended to this Friday. If you have, or if you still get overwhelmed and you can't get it all done by Friday, that's cool. Hit me up. It's it's cool. Hit me up. Uh you will see, I don't know if Katie's done it yet, but I think she has, for World Regions class. And we went ahead and extended the two, the normally Tuesday deadline for the international film. That's been extended already to Friday at midnight. Don't get used to it. We're just doing that because of this Russian hack on the publisher's website this week. But even the Tuesday deadline for the international film has been pushed uh, to Friday this week. And it's a good film, too, and it's a long film. So, actually, it's probably better to give everybody more time to look at it. And also, we went ahead and scanned in uh, the first two chapters of the textbook for those of you that haven't got your textbook yet, even though you're on Moodle because of the Russian hack. And so, there are the first two chapters in PDF form on Moodle. Where are they at on Moodle, Katie? At the very top. At the very top. So, those of you that can't even get your book yet, you can at least get the first couple chapters and forever long this hack takes, we'll stand by you and keep feeding you information and help you get through this. So I would apologize for what's going on, but I don't own the publisher's website. I don't make any damn money off the publisher's website and I'm not a Russian hacker. So there's only so much I can apologize for, but I hate it that you know, on week one, it causes such chaos for us. But thus, this is the modern world we live in and it's kind of hilarious. So even when bad things happen, you kind of have to step back and laugh at them a little bit. Okay, uh, let's see. A Carnahan says, I hopped on late, but which site was hacked for the books? I'm assuming Amazon is fine. <laughs> oh, that'd be hilarious if Amazon got hacked. Now, you'd know if Amazon got hacked, the world would be ending. Um, it was our world regional textbook, um, the Platt Avengers World, that's published through a publisher called Kindle Hunt. And their website got hacked sometime late Thursday by the Russians. <laughs> I have no proof of that. I don't need proof. <laughs> it's just fun to say it. Uh, in Mother Russia, government hack you. <laughs> okay, uh, but I'm wrapping up the old online office hour mailbag. Thank you all for tuning in. If you have any other questions about anything not covered here, 
or any new questions that pop up, do not ever hesitate to hit me up. Uh, and by the way, hit me up every day. If I don't respond and within 24 hours, hit me up again with the same email. Hit me up again on day three. I do get overwhelmed with emails sometimes, especially this time of year. Uh, so I'm not intentionally ignoring anybody. I literally just only have so much time and energy in my brain to move forward when, uh, uh, in trying times. Uh, but you're never bugging me. I'm here for you. That's what this uh, being a professor is all about. So hit me up, hit me up, hit me up with the, whatever you need. And by the way, uh, hit me up for you world region heirs. Hit me up uh, with what current event story you'd like me to talk about next Monday. And, you know, things happen fast, so it might not happen until Sunday night, something we want to talk about. But if there's something out there that's been nagging you and you're like, what is this story about? Hit me up and I'll try to work it in next Monday. Wine peeps, stay uh, the course. Your class is going fine. You should already be getting into some quizzes and drinking some wines. Uh, and World Regions, you got a bunch of lectures uh, and a film to watch this week. So get on it. Get on it and get it and get them points starting to rack up. Uh, but for now, have a great evening, a great week, and we'll see you back online this time next week, if not sooner. Party on.